So the first thing I'm going to do before I cut my panels in, so my end panels on the units, I've got eight end panels to do. I've got the ones that make contact with the floor and go directly to the top of the unit. And then I've got end panels which go from the bottom of the unit to the top of the unit. And they're actually slightly less in height. They're the height of the bottom of the bottom door and the top of the top door. So there's a continuation, if you like, the shadow gap that goes around between my capping or cornice, it's only a flat section here, is exactly the same. So you get that detail carry on, carrying on, carrying on all the way through. So you get that detail carrying on all the way through. So all of my doors have been made out of MDF. Cut rights have made all those to size for me, which uh, go with the units, obviously. And the end panels are also MDF. It's a standard MDF, which has been painted. So what I like to do where they are in contact with the ground is I actually like to lip the bottom with Sapili or another sort of hardwood. These will get painted in as well. And the only reason I do that is that in the event of a escape of water, which does happen in kitchens, as all insurance companies will tell you, this will prevent the moisture going into the bottom of those MDF panels and just blowing them off. Even if the moisture is only present for 24 hours, the chances are it will suck in and it will blow. So also there's another benefit of using this, and this comes down to the initial marking and cutting of the panel. So my panels are all made over width, and the reason for that is because I want to be able to shoot them in to the wall. Also, at a time of production, we're not sure of the allowance that we need between the back of the carcasses and the wall. And the reason for that is, is because mainly it's because of services, for example, waste pipes and all of those elements that you need to get behind units in, in some cases. And anyone who's done a lot of kitchen fitting will know that sometimes there's just not enough service cavity behind. And the general problem is, is where you have an integrated dishwasher in a run. And if you have to pass behind that with a waste pipe, if the plumber's already got that waste pipe in, the chances are you can't get that fitted appliance directly back. When I measure my panel, it's a matter of simply hooking onto the top of this unit here and taking two dimensions. So the first dimension being at the end, obviously, and I can measure exactly to that millimetre perfect. I can do the same on the back millimetre perfect. So what I'm going to do first is actually put one of the doors on. The reason I'm going to put one of the doors on is adjust it up to make sure that I get the exact distance out for my panel to project. And then what I'll do is I'll go and rip a section down, so say it's 22mm or 23mm, I'll rip a couple of sections down 23mm and I use them every time to set my panels out no matter where the panels are, whether they're here, here, or here projecting out there. It just saves a lot of time. Um, sometimes I put a bit of masking tape to hold them while I'm setting the whole thing out, or equally, where you can allow a little bit of clearance at the back, you can do a direct measurement to them, take off a mill or two so you're not jamming against the wall at the back, and it's easy to fix them in. I will put one of these doors on. So anyone who's used any of the Blum products, you'll realize just how intuitive and how simple they are. So on the plate that goes in the cabinet, there's always an arrow. The arrow faces towards the front of the cabinet. There's a couple of ferrules here, which simply push into the actual holes which are pre-drilled in the unit. And then you just gently drive these two screws in and that fixes it back. So I'll get these on. I'll clip the hinges into the doors. These are especially quick. They have a quick release or a quick clamp here. There's no screws that go into the doors. These push into the drill hole. They expand these ferrules here and then you lock it down. When you lock it down, it expands those ferrules there.
So we've put one door on and we've done that to get the margin to the base of the door from the carcass edge and it's round about 23 millimetres. That will suit me perfectly. So I'm going to set all of our panels 23 millimetres past the base. So I'll go and rip down a section of timber at 23 and I'll mark on that base block and that's what we'll use for all of the panels. What I'm going to do next is clamp that on parallel and plumb to the front edge and I'm going to do my final scribe against the wall and mark for my skirting cut, take that out, then it's just a matter of fixing it in, repeat that a few times and all the panels are good. So what I am doing this is my spacer, which is what I want my panel to end up the base of the units. And then this is another section, which is what I'm going to use for the scribe. So I set my panel exactly the two distances out from the front of the carcass. That's the front of the panel. That's the front of the carcass. That is the projection I'm looking for. That's my 23 millimeter strip. This section is now what I'm going to run down and scribe all the way along the wall and around the skirting. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, I'm going to knock off the ends so it's not sharp and the reason I like using a bit of softwood is that it won't mark the walls. I have got plenty of scribing devices but this has got a point on it, it's going to leave a black line all the way down the wall, you can put a bit of masking tape on the end or whatever but you can use them that way around as well, you just pop a pencil in here and you can adjust it. They're particularly good if you've got something which is a really bad contour but I'm virtually straight against the wall there. There's only a very slight undulation. I possibly could have cut them parallel, those panels, but I'm a carpenter and I like things to fit and I like to scribe things in. So it's a simple, that's my projection. That's my scribe distance there. Add the two together, pull the panel well out of the way. And then I'm just gonna use that with a very sharp pencil all the way down. And then we'll cut that and it will fit like a treat. So I'm just about to do the first fix of the kitchen sink. It's a double bowl, it's stainless steel. So basically it gets set in with the top of the carcass and then the granite or solid surface will be machined out and go directly over the top and it's bedded, bedded on a silicon seal. So what you often have to do is cut quite a lot of the unit out. So on here, I'm taking some of this rail out and then I've run up some sections of timber to stiffen it all back up and form a rebate. So this, this section here is going to form a rebate. That's going to go in the cutout there and that hangs down two millimetres, which is the thickness of the steel or the flange and that will support the front edge. And then I've got a series of bearers as well 
which can be fixed straight in the back, flush with the datum button. That's also got a rebate in it there. They will take the back, it'll be one either side there. And then I've got the side rebates as well, which mimic the rebate here. They all get notched out underneath to support that and everything's nice and strong. Then I'll set the bowl in, plumb it all in, get the dishwasher plumbed in. That enables me to get all of my doors on and get it all straightened up. So I've just run all of these sections in, all these rebated sections, and what they represent is, if I turn this sink over, it represents this flange here. There's two flanges. There's the flange that the bowl's welded to, and then there's this outer flange here, which is effectively the overall lining of the sink. So what I've done is added this stiffener here, because this is only MFC, so it's only melamine-based chipboard, you cut into that and that's only about 35 mil wide. Bit of pressure on there, it's finished. So I've played a hardwood rebated rail underneath there. <clears throat> and now I can set this in. And that finishes dead flush with the surface. When the solid surface or granite goes on top, we then put a silicon seal all the way around, bed it on, and that's it finished. And there you see there's the aperture there to allow the taps to come through the center. So that's how I fitted my sink. I'm really happy with that. Now I'm going to get on, get a dishwasher in, enable me to get all of these panels and doors all the way through the front. Let's come me again. So I put a couple of doors on, and the reason why I've only put certain doors on is to set up panels, margins, and also the appliances as well. So you see that I've put in a couple of my appliances. I've got these warming drawers here, and this is, this is, a, this is the microwave, for example, a dishwasher here, and there's another oven that goes underneath the island unit as well, under the hob. Uh, this is obviously my temporary worktop. This is uh, just a bit of MDF. So I'm going to be carrying on now, putting in all of the Blum hinges. These are the new Onyx Black. They just slot in, make sure they're nice and flat, fully back. Then it's just a matter of clipping the door panel in place and fine tuning the adjustment on the hinges. So it's time for me to cut these parts for the Legra boxes. So what I've done is I've put some in, um, masking tape on, marked them exactly to the length that I need, and then I'm going to use the chop saw to cut them. So. What's really important is don't use a timber blade to cut this aluminium. It is going to, if it doesn't break the blade or it's going to break the aluminium, it's pretty dangerous. So it's well worth keeping an aluminium type chop saw blade in your toolkit. And the difference is, or the key difference is, is the rake of the teeth and also the shape of the teeth. As opposed to a wood saw blade, which has opposite angled teeth so one this way one that way one this way one that way and a particular rake the rake is the angle from the edge or the circumference if you like of the blade these have got a negative rake which simply means that instead of the rake going like this it's more like that it's negative it's actually back on itself and also the teeth, you've got one cutting tooth and then you've got the next one, which has actually got beveled shoulders, if you like. So it's hard to see. I'll try and, I'll try and offer it up to you. But one is more like a saw blade and the next one's beveled, saw blade, beveled and so on and so forth. So I'm going to swap those blades out now and we'll cut this aluminium and you can just see how useful that is. Got dust extraction on. 
it does create dust that gets everywhere. It's worth vacuuming everything off before you put it together, especially where those little filings of aluminium go down the extruded section of the aluminium. And you can see that that cut is absolutely perfect. There's no marking. It's just like the factory produce end. So inside here, we have a left and a right plate, which basically fixes these together. And then we have the cover strips which match the Havana Brown, which will go on once the drawer is together. And it is an easy, easy process. So this bit fits under the base. This bit is the top rail for the size of the drawer that I'm doing. Oh, I'm shaking. Too much coffee. That's the thing, that's the first appliance I put in. It was the most important one. We didn't have a cooker, but we did have a coffee machine. I do like a cup of coffee. All right, and that's it. So we've lined all that up now. So that is the, that's the front. It's very straightforward, as I say. So this will then clip on. You hear it click. That's it clipped on. And then we have the inside face. Put that on first, just clicks in. So they are clicked in now, that's all of those parts. These fronts differ slightly in terms of, this is for the very short drawer, is that they have a screw that you actually wind in and it kind of locks it in there. That's the only difference. And Flipping it in. This is the sound I like when you hear this. Here we go. Tip on nicely. Here's my door panel, obviously. It's pre-drilled in the right place, thanks to the cut lights, to accept the bracket. It's a set of ferrules again. There we go. And so this is such a quick system and it just saves hours of lining up and adjusting and fixing brackets on a measuring. There is plenty of adjustments. So there's the fine tuning. You can go up, down, left, right, and adjust the pitch slightly. I often find though, if you install all of the Blum products straight out of the packets, um, everything seems to be synchronized quite nicely to start with. So a little bit of advice is get all of your panels in and then look at them as a whole. Start off with maybe your doors, lining those up and work away from that, keeping the datum nice and true at the bottom in the case of drawers. And I always find that works best. Instead of putting it in and fiddling with it straight away and then if, you, if you're slightly out and you put the next one slightly to that, you're much better off to do all of that lining up just before you're ready to sign up on it.